Hey Explorers, today we're doing kitchen science. We're diving into a delightful science experiment that you can eat. We're making sourdough bagels. And guess what? These bagels are alive. We're teaming up with our tiny invisible friends, bacteria and yeast. Mmm, that's so good. Let's talk about sourdough starter, our secret ingredient. It's not just flour and water, it's actually a living, bubbling community full of wild yeast and lactobacillus bacteria. Let's say hi to Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles is our sourdough starter, and it eats the sugar that's in the flour to make carbon dioxide gas. This is what helps our dough rise and to be bubbly. But wait, there's more. The bacteria in our sourdough starter makes lactic acid, which is what gives our sourdough its tangy flavor. It's like a microscopic bake-off happening right inside this jar. To make our sourdough bagels, first we need to use our active sourdough starter to make our dough. The best way to do this is to actually weigh out our ingredients instead of doing measurements like cups. So I've got my kitchen scale and a big metal bowl that I've weighed out and teared to be zero. And now I need to add 150 grams of my starter. That's 33, 80, we're getting there. All right, and this is just a goopy, beautiful mess. Actually, what's happening with the flour and water combining together is that gluten strands are starting to form, and that is this whole mess, is delicious gluten that's gonna make some tasty bread for us. With our 150 grams of sourdough starter, now I need 250 grams of lukewarm water. Best to use room temperature. Because this is a living thing, we don't want it to be too hot and burn it, but we don't want it to be too cold because then our dough won't be able to rise and do what it needs to do to become bagels. 200 and 250, perfect. So now I can add my 10 grams of salt, which I've already pre-weighed. Dust that in. And now is the time to give it a really good mix. So I'm gonna take it off of my scale, grab a fork, and just start mixing around my dough and just break up the starter so it combines with the water to become a really nice, consistent kind of liquidy goop. So now back to the scale. Zero it out, so we're weighing fresh. And now we need to add 24 grams of olive oil. So we're just gonna pour slowly and watch our scale and slow down as it approaches 24. So you don't get too much. That's great, so now I'm just gonna give it a little mix to get all of that combined. And now our last ingredient, 500 grams of bread flour. Zero out our scale, and we can just start pouring this in nice and slow. I always love science you can eat. The tastiest science of all. All right, and there we go. There's 500 grams of bread flour. So now we need to give this a really good mix, and then we can start kneading our dough. Gonna make sure all of the flour gets incorporated into our mix. It'll be this nice kind of beige dough we start seeing form. I'm gonna make sure I get all the flour off the sides of my bowl. And now if you ever look into sourdough starters, you're gonna see a lot of things about how hard it might be or how it's just very tricky, and it's really not. It actually just takes a good amount of patience, which is really, really great. And something I love to say that all science needs is just some patience while you're going through and you're exploring and you're trying to figure things out. A sourdough starter can take anywhere between a few days to a few weeks or a couple months to actually get going. But once it's going, you're off to the races and you can have all the nice, healthy sourdough bread you need. Sourdough 
besides being a really tasty science experiment that you can do at home, is actually really good for your gut health because of all the wild yeast and bacteria that are in it. All right, so I'm just forming my dough into a nice ball and I'm kneading it as we go to get all the ingredients incorporated together. Kneading isn't just exercise for your hands, it's actually a workout for the gluten. Gluten is like stretchy invisible balloons that trap the carbon dioxide gas. The more we need, the stronger those balloons get, giving us chewy, amazing bagels in the end. Now that we've got our ball of dough, we need to let it rise. This can take quite a long time because you need to let all of the wild yeast and bacteria do their job. The rising process, when it's warm in your home, can take about three to four hours, but I keep my house a little bit cold, so I usually like to leave this overnight or for about 12 hours. So we're gonna come back when this is ready to make bagels. Overnight, all of our ingredients work together to form this really big, beautiful dough, much bigger than it started out with. And this is because the gluten trapping that carbon dioxide gas has just ballooned up which is awesome. And now it's bagel shaping time. To shape our bagels, the first step is to pour our dough out onto a floured surface. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my bread flour onto my counter here. And then I'm going to get all of my dough and pour it out onto the flour. Scraping the bowl so I don't miss any of it. Boop. Okay, and now, as you can see, all those beautiful little strands of gluten in there, and what I can do now is kind of stretch it, get this nice rectangle going, and then, fold it into itself so I get more of a log shape. So now I'm moving over to my silicon baking mat which has some measurements on it and I can use those and my bench scraper here to divide my dough into equal portions for my bagels. That way there's not one that's really big and one that's really tiny. Okay, I wanna give it, there we go, that. These are gonna be nice sized bagels. And we should get about eight bagels. Now that I've got my bagels portioned out, I can grab each of these, form it into a little ball. Then we're going to leave them to do an additional proof for about half an hour. So we just wanna make nice, tight balls of dough. And then after this additional proof is when we're gonna shape these into bagels. We're gonna put the holes in them and make them look like bagels. I love sourdough for the tangy flavor you get. I've had my starter going for quite a while now. So it's starting to be this really nice tang to all the bread. And it really makes a beautiful sandwich and toast. We've got eight nicely formed balls of dough, so now we can leave them on a parchment-lined baking sheet for about 15, 20 minutes, or up to half an hour, and let them proof additionally before we shape them into bagels. Science! One by one, taking our balls of dough, and we're gonna use our thumbs to punch a hole in the middle, about the size of a walnut, and then we're gonna stretch our balls into the shape of a bagel. So here's our first one. So we're gonna make our little hole and we're just going to gently run it through our hands. This is called a barrel technique stretch. 
We're just gonna do this a few times, working our way around the bagel. Keep it nice and even. And we'll put it back on our sheet. Then we just keep going one by one, making our hole and start stretching into the nice circular uniform shape of a bagel. Now these might not look like store-bought bagels where they're all nice and perfect and smooth, but they're still gonna be really tasty. Did you know that yeast has been helping humans make bread for about 5,000 years? It's older than the ancient pyramids. Now the good part is, when you punch your hole, if you feel any bits that are a little too thin or too wide, you can just focus on stretching out those wide pieces. So you can try to make it all match. Did you know that the hole in the middle of a bagel isn't just for style? It's actually to help the bagel cook evenly all throughout. Now that we've got our bagels shaped, we're going to let them have another little nap, at which point the dough is gonna rise up just a little bit more and get poofy. Then we're going to work on the last steps to get them into the oven. Now that our bagels have rested and poofed up just a little bit more, it's time to get them in the oven. But first, let's go over a quick kitchen chemistry trick. Boiling the bagels before baking them gives them that shiny, chewy crust that we all love. The hot water gelatinizes the starch on the outside of the bagel. Add a pinch of baking soda to the pot and bam, our water becomes alkaline. This gives our bagels that shiny, darker crust while they bake. This is actually how pretzels get their pretzel flavor as well. I, on the other hand, like to use a little bit of honey in my water and then we get that shiny, chewy crust with a little bit of sweetness as well. Before we get them in our pot, we stretch them out just a little more to reshape them so they're nice and bagel shaped. Then we're going to boil them for 30 seconds on each side. Just gently shaping our bagels. And I've got a nice boiling pot of water behind me as well as I've preheated my oven to 425. So now we're ready to boil our bagels. So one at a time, I'm going to drop my bagels in and I'm going to boil them for 30 seconds, then flip them and boil them for 30 seconds again. After boiling the bagels is the perfect time to top them. I've got everything bagel mix, or you can use sesame seeds, but this batch I'm actually gonna leave plain because they're still gonna have that delicious tangy sourdough flavor. And now our bagels go into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for the final transformation. I can't wait for this tasty science. Creating your own sourdough starter or making bagels at home is amazingly delicious kitchen science. If you tried this experiment at home or with your class, make sure you take a photo or video and tag us so we can see how your bagels turn out. Subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media so you don't miss any of the fun in the lab or right here in the kitchen. Plus, you can head over to explorationstation.net to find the free downloadable worksheet for this experiment or more resources. If you'd like to help further our adventures in exploration and science, you can visit our Patreon page and help support Clayton's Exploration Station. Now that our bagels have been baking for 25 minutes, it's time to taste our delicious science. All right, these look like some amazingly delicious science. 
I am going to slice right into one of these bagels to see how successful we were, but they honestly smell so amazing right now. Just a little bit of butter on our bagels. Mmm. All right. Mmm. Mm-hmm. They've got a crunchy crust, a chewy center, and that tangy sourdough flavor that is amazing. And it's all thanks to teamwork between us and our microbial pals. Sourdough bagels aren't just a tasty treat. They're science that you can smell, see, and taste. Bacteria and yeast work together to make something delicious and nutritious. And you're the scientist that brings it all together. Until next time, explorers, stay curious and stay nutritious. Mmm, that's so good. Weekend Exploration Station.